everyone, I'm Leanne, if you don't know me, and if you do know me and you're back, thank you so much. I'm glad to have you guys back. Today we are doing my second trimester recap. I did a whole video like this for my first trimester and I'm determined to stick with it, do it for the second and third trimester, so keep an eye out for that third one. I'm officially in my third trimester. I'm 28 weeks and one day. I think this video is gonna go out next week, so I'll be even further along, but the second trimester is over. I took notes week by week on all the changes that I felt, all the different things going on with my body, how I was generally feeling, just everything. I just took notes on everything, but I will say before I get started, it's way less notes than the first trimester because I mean, as I'm sure you already know, the second trimester is generally a little less eventful. It's less horrible, basically, for a lot of people. You know, my experience is my experience, but I think generally people have an easier time in the second trimester compared to the first one. The first one, looking back, oh my gosh, that was rough. I didn't realize how tired I was until I got out of it, and I still don't feel like I'm like 100%, like I still feel like I'm definitely tired and I remained you know, moderately tired through the second trimester, but like, oh my gosh, I was like withered in my first trimester and I didn't even realize how bad it was. Anyway, I'll tell you everything week by week by week. I also have a few products that I wanna share with you guys, a couple of things that you guys asked about, a few things that I've just been loving or that I've discovered. And I'll show you my bump where it's at right now. Now that I've just gotten out of the second trimester about two days ago, it's definitely grown a lot in the last trimester. And then last, I asked you guys on Instagram if you guys had any questions. You had a lot of questions and I will answer as many as I can get to. But I did notice that there were a bunch of questions that I covered in my first trimester video. So I will link that down below. I'll also link it in a card up here. If you missed that one, go check it out. I answered so many questions over there too. Okay, let's get started. I need to get my note. I need to get my water. I need to catch my breath. I've got a lot to do right now. Okay, so this feels like an eternity ago, but week 14, at the beginning of the second trimester, I wrote that I was getting my spark back. So I was starting to feel that energy return. I was feeling a little less withered. And I was really also looking for that. I was really hoping the energy was coming back because that's what everyone says. Everyone says it's like the golden time, you feel amazing, and really honestly, you do feel just so, so, so much better. And I said that I was really tired early if I don't have a nap, but I don't necessarily have to. <laughs> so I was just really trying to be normal at this point. And then I also wrote that I was feeling bad at night, which is definitely something that I had all through the first trimester. Just, you know, I'd feel pretty much okay during the day usually as it was easing up but then by the evening almost every day after dinner i would just feel like wow like horrible you know like nausea all of that and then the last note for week 14 was fur on my neck question mark exclamation so at this time we were car shopping i got my mom car my very first like big car I, i've never had a car like this it's it's a moment and i was in a parking lot of a car dealership and i was on my story and it was just the way the light was coming in through the car window it was catching and i noticed that i had like a ton of peach fuzz like more than i've ever seen on any part of my body well i guess like my arms are pretty furry and it's like that kind of clear blonde hair but on my face and on my neck it just like caught the light in a whole new way <laughs> And I was like, what is this? How did I not notice this growing? It must have sprung up overnight, but I have just like heavy peach fuzz, like all down the sides right here. And then also like on my neck sort of. And I shared it on my story because I thought it was hilarious. And so many of you guys were like, I have this too. I always have this during pregnancy. A lot of people also said that they have it on their belly. I have it on my belly also. I was kind of prepared for that to happen, but I definitely didn't expect the amount of fuzz and fur that I have on my face and my neck. And I know I could just shave it off. Like people do like dermaplaning and stuff. I haven't done that. I don't know. I could do it, maybe I'll do it before this whole thing is over, but I stayed furry through my second trimester at least. Okay, moving on to week 15. I wrote, 
actually getting my spark back. <laughs> and in parentheses, wanting to clean and declutter, which was definitely not a feeling that I had at all in my first trimester. I was just so wiped out. I was not feeling like cleaning, decluttering, taking on extra projects at night and on the weekend and stuff like that. Like I was just like barely alive. So I felt like that was a really good sign that I was like feeling that urge, you know? And then I wrote that my bump was coming in hot and I was breaking out. Uh, I probably wrote over and over and over again that my bump was like coming in, I was feeling big, all that stuff, so just prepare yourself. But apparently at week 15, I felt like my bump was coming in hot. I'll try to find a picture if I took one around week 15. It was probably not coming in hot, but I felt like it was. Okay, week 16, woke up from a dream where I couldn't breathe. And when I woke up and I was actually awake, I felt like I couldn't breathe in real life and I was on my back. And they have a lot of recommendations about sleeping positions when you're pregnant and everyone says sleeping on your back is like a no-no, but they say if you wake up and you've been sleeping on your back, don't freak out, it's okay. Um, it can put pressure on the vena cava, which can reduce blood flow and it reduces blood flow to the baby. It's just like not a good thing. And it doesn't apply to everyone I've learned. And I was definitely freaked out by this. And it's actually something that they say, your body will most likely wake you up if you're in that position and something bad is happening. And I think that's what happened to me. And it really freaked me out. And after that, I've really been paying attention to my sleeping position. I've been really trying to exclusively sleep on my left side. That's like the ideal position there's a whole thing about it for some reason that's one thing that my my mind my pregnant brain has like clung on to is this like the sleeping position thing i feel like everybody has their thing that they're like a little too focused on and that's mine but i've been sleeping on my left side it's fine i wrote less burping finally if you watched my first trimester video you know that was like my misery at night i would start burping and not be able to stop it was just like constant it would make me feel sick it was just awful and i couldn't get away from it and nothing i did would fix it i tried eating different things i tried avoiding things it just was miserable and it finally started to lessen in week 16. i wrote that i can stay up and watch a movie <laughs> big moment and I was having some cramping and when I talked to my doctor about it, she wanted me on bed rest and I was just kind of like taking it easy a little bit more and that was a little bit of a scary time but I ended up getting checked out and everything was okay. I got an ultrasound, all of that. I need to slow down, I'm out of breath. <laughs> okay, week 17. This is a huge moment for me, definitely the biggest moment for me in pregnancy so far, honestly. I wrote in all caps, I feel the baby. <laughs> and I wrote in parentheses, little tiny bubbles mostly noticing when I lay down. And it blew my mind. I had no idea that I would be able to feel the baby this early. I had no idea what it was gonna feel like. I've never felt it before. And it was just like the teeniest, tiniest bubbles in my belly. It wasn't uncomfortable at all. It was just a little, it was just a slightly foreign feeling. You know, I had never felt anything quite like it. Didn't feel like gas, didn't feel like, oh, my stomach's upset or anything like that. It was just like, like a little carbonation or something. It's just that teeny tiny baby moving around and it blew my mind. It made my life. It was just like the highlight of my life basically. And that started at week 17. Um, I also was having a little more cramping, but way less compared to week 16, but I was still trying to take it easy. And apparently I was not sleeping well. I don't really remember what was going on, but I think I was just starting to wake up in the middle of the night more often and not be able to go back to sleep. Okay, moving on to week 18, I wrote, Grant can feel the baby too. <laughs> Since I could feel the baby, I was just on high alert. And anytime I could feel the baby and Grant was there, I was just like, hold my belly, you know, feel the baby. And I, I did feel like it was kind of a shot in the dark because from what I've read, your partner usually can't feel your baby as early as you can, like by a lot. And he could actually feel the baby moving from the outside at week 18. And that's like 
all we do now. <laughs> like since week 18 at night, you know, when we're watching shows or watching vlogs or whatever, it's just like nonstop feel the baby. And you know, very early on, it was just teeny tiny movements, but I was so excited that he could feel it. And he's made comments, it's like, I wish that I could carry the baby, you know, like I wish that I could feel everything that you're feeling and obviously probably not all the bad stuff, but actually getting to feel the baby moving around, shifting, kicking, all of that. And I thought that was really sweet that he said that. Okay, so I also wrote some cramping on and off and then tired again. So I was kind of in and out of being tired. Week 19, deaf feeling bigger. <laughs> so continuing to grow as expected, feeling the baby's movements even more, peeing a lot. And the other thing that happened week 19 was my anatomy scan. A lot of times people get it at 20 weeks or around 20 weeks. And basically if you've never had one before, they just take a really, really close look at the baby, count fingers and toes, look at the organs, like really check on the development of the baby. And I'm considered a high risk pregnancy because I did IVF and I also have lupus, which is an autoimmune disorder. And so I went to a high risk OB and it was my first time meeting with her. She was really nice, really helpful. We went through the whole scan, everything looked great. So obviously that's amazing news. It's exactly what we hoped for and prayed for, but I also learned that if you have the SSA antibody, which is something that's associated with lupus and with Sjogren's, that's something that can pass through to your baby and cause neonatal lupus. And I am SSA positive. And one of the worst things that can happen with neonatal lupus is a complete heart block. And I didn't know anything about this. This really like shook my world. I have a whole vlog from the weekend after we learned this and I explain everything in great detail. Um, it was really scary. Like I wrote anatomy scan, SSA antibodies, scary, scary, scary. Like it was horrible. I was so scared that my baby was gonna have heart problems. It could lead to, you know, the baby not making it or the baby will need a pacemaker right after birth. It's just scary all around. And there were a lot of unknowns right then at the beginning, but we learned a lot. We read a lot. Uh, the doctor is great. She explained a lot, which I really appreciate. And the highest risk period for this heart block developing is around like 16 to 18 weeks to 26 weeks. And so we started going and seeing this high-risk OB every single week after that 19-week scan through 26 weeks. So almost through the whole second trimester, I've been going to weekly appointments to take really, really close looks at the baby's heart to make sure the rhythm is good, to make sure everything's looking good. I have a hundred thousand pictures of this baby at this point. I am so grateful that I have access to these doctors and I can go and have this baby checked out. Spoiler alert, if you haven't been following with the vlogs, everything is okay. Every week we've gone back and the baby's heart looks good. We saw a cardiologist that specializes in this kind of stuff and learned even more. Uh, I'm gonna continue on with this cardiologist. When the baby is born, she will immediately have an echo done and that cardiologist will look at those results. And then I'll also be bringing her back after a couple of months and she will get another echo. And then at that point, she will be officially clear and we won't have to worry about a heart block developing. But sharing all of this, I've heard from so many of you guys that you've either been through it with your babies or you've actually been through it on the heart block side. It's just been so encouraging and it's just like a level of sport that I had no expectation of, you know what I mean? And I thank you guys so many times and I literally cannot thank you enough. Like I want to thank you in every single video because it was just such a scary moment learning about this and it just felt like, oh my gosh, we've been through so much and then now this and it's a complete unknown and i try to be prepared for everything and i try to learn it's just it was a lot you know and i let myself be really scared and really anxious and really worried about it for like two days really i like woke up crying i let myself have that and then from then on i was just like you know the only thing that i can do is 
treasure today, treasure the time that I have with her right now. Nothing is promised ever. You know, whether you have lupus, whether you have just any number of things going on, you just have to treasure what you have right now. And I had that time with my baby and oh my gosh, it's gonna make me cry just even taking myself back to like telling myself these things. I took that time, I was scared, I was sad. And then I just went ahead and said, I am lucky to go to these doctor's appointments and be able to look at this baby's heart so closely and have specialists. And right now it looks good and I'm gonna treasure that. And everything worked out. We prayed about it so much. We had my whole family praying about it. We had everyone in the world praying about it, eating cookies, all those things. And it worked out. Um, I did not mean to like go on a whole thing here, but watch that vlog if you want to hear more. It was a lot. I also wrote for week 19 that we started using an at-home Doppler and a lot of doctors say not to use these and I talk to all three of my doctors, the cardiologist, the high-risk OB, and my regular OB. They're all very good doctors and they're all like, this poses no actual threat to you or the baby. The only threat is that it could potentially cause more anxiety. Like if you're not able to find the heartbeat yourself or you know something like that. I was always able to find the heartbeat. I was 19 weeks. I don't wanna influence anyone to go out and buy a home Doppler if your doctor is saying don't do it, but in my experience, it was very reassuring. It was very good to me. And from what we read and what we learned about after we heard about the heart block, they said it was a good idea to go ahead and check it every day. And I checked it every single day, twice a day. And it was good for me. It didn't cause extra anxiety. And I know that it can for some people. This was just my experience, you know? So week 20, so tired in the afternoons again. Still battling with my tiredness. Uh, also, my lashes suddenly look horrible slash are falling out and short. I don't know what happened here. My lashes just started looking awful and no matter what I did, they just looked terrible. I tried different mascaras. I tried different curlers. My lashes were looking amazing before that. They just got really short and terrible and they've improved a little bit now, but they're still not as long. And I talked to you guys about this on my story and so many people said during pregnancy, they had the same thing. This was definitely something that came out of left field as so many people talk about like, oh my gosh, your hair, your skin, your nails, like everything looks so good in pregnancy. I just did not think my lashes would suddenly just look like garbage, but that's what happened at week 20. <laughs> and then also at week 20, I wrote that I can see the baby moving from the outside. So just like sitting, watching my belly, I could see it kind of ripple and move and bump and jump like that, which was really cool. Week 21, increased round ligament pain big time. And I had experienced some round ligament pain as early as I think like week 11. I talked to my doctor about it. I know it's a normal thing. And I just tried to like slow down a little bit more. Like don't just jump up from squatting down or sitting down or whatever. I just tried to like modify my movements to avoid it. But in week 21, it just got so much more painful when it would happen. And I really had to slow down, you know? And then also in week 21, I finally caught a video showing the movement from the outside, which was really exciting. And I shared a few along the way in my stories. And then also in week 21, I saw the pediatric cardiologist and she was looking great. I just told y'all about that. Week 22, I wrote burping is back with the crying emoji. Uh, it was definitely trailing off before this, which I was so grateful for because it was just, you know, you know that feeling? I don't know, I totally associate it with being a kid, like where you feel really sick and then you burp and you feel better. It was like that, but like over and over and over and over again, no matter what I did, it was just awful. And then also wild dreams. Uh, also, I tried on my pre-pregnancy shorts and they buttoned, but it was hysterical and uncomfortable. I lasted 10 minutes maybe because I felt like the baby was mad. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, but I put on these like high-waisted jean shorts 
that are definitely very stretchy. So that's pretty much the only reason why they could still button and zip. But I was just like, what are you doing, girl? <laughs> and I just felt like this baby is used to stretchy dresses and flowy dresses. And suddenly I button on some denim shorts. She's not happy. <laughs> okay, in week 23, feel like I'm getting bigger faster. And I also had a migraine with Aura. If you've never had a migraine before with like a visual element, it's kind of hard to describe. It's very hard to describe, but basically you'll be doing something and then suddenly there's like a blurry spot. It could be in the middle. It can kind of be over here. It can kind of be like a line or like a bright spot, but it can kind of move. And with me, for whatever reason, it comes on so subtly that it's just like suddenly I realized, oh my gosh, I can't see. And I had a call with my accountant scheduled that afternoon and it was like 10 minutes before this call and I was so stressed. I was like, I need to be able to focus on my computer screen. I can't have a migraine coming on where I cannot see my computer screen when I'm about to have this big call. And it really freaked me out because having like a visual disturbance and like an extreme headache like that out of nowhere where, you know, before that, I, I'm pretty sure I haven't had a migraine like that in my pregnancy so far. So it did scare me a little bit and I did talk to the doctor and I took it easy and I got checked out and all of that stuff. And, you know, I'm doing these weekly checks anyway. Um, and it ended up just being a migraine, which I've had in the past. It was just a bad day basically. Also in week 23, belly button getting noticeably more shallow. <laughs> this is definitely the point where I started to notice like things are changing in this region. It was just getting ever so slightly more shallow. I haven't any, it was just getting a little flatter, you know? Okay, week 24, can't eat my favorite freshie bowl because it makes me miserably full. <laughs> I don't know if they have a freshie everywhere, but basically you can get like salads, wraps, bowls, all kinds of different stuff. And a lot of it is kind of more on the healthy side, but there's this bowl that I really love to get that has like rice, beets, kale, chicken, avocado, black beans, like all kinds of different yummy stuff, but it's pretty big, like it's big. And it's my favorite thing to order in when I'm not eating with Grant. and. It's definitely like kind of like a special occasion thing because I feel like it's kind of like overpriced, but it's just so delicious to me. I love it so much. And one day I ordered it, ate it all because I love it so much. And I just felt miserable for the rest of the day. And pretty much from that point forward, I've had to be pretty careful about eating a lot at once. I eat all the time, like throughout the day, I'm constantly eating, but I have to really be careful when I'm about to eat something I'm like really excited about or it's like really big portion because if I just go to town and I don't slow down and like really like monitor like am I getting full you know like where am I at I just get so miserably full and then I'm miserable basically the rest of the day and it's just like not worth it anymore and since then I have not ordered the freshie bowl again which is so sad also I was feeling way more pronounced movement when I'm actually standing whereas before it was mostly just when I was sitting still or laying down I could really feel the baby um, but I started to actually be able to feel her move around when I was moving around myself, which was a cool moment. Week 25, my belly button looks like it's on the way out. Um, my round ligament pain is flaring up more and more frequently. Uh, also, driving to Houston is a lot and hurts my back to be in the car for over three hours, especially when I'm driving. So I'm pretty sure this week I made a trip down to Houston by myself and my back was killing me. Like I said, I got a new car. So maybe it's the car, maybe just being in one position in that seat for too long is just too much for me. Or maybe it's being pregnant, I don't know. I got to see my sister's new baby and it's just the most exciting thing ever for my family. Moving on to week 26, all caps, we're in the clear with the heart block. And then I wrote mostly. <laughs> So like I said, the highest risk period for that heart block developing was, you know, from when I got the anatomy scan through 26 weeks and I was doing the weekly checks. And at the 26 week check, 
the baby was looking good, the heart was looking good, and it was just such a huge relief for me. Um, since then, we have continued to see the high risk OB every other week, and at a certain point, we will stop, but the baby is still looking good. I'm still doing those checks. I just actually went to the high risk OB yesterday. She is two pounds, 13 ounces. She is measuring bigger than both of my apps say that she should or whatever. I mean, obviously every baby is different, but like she is growing, she is thriving. The heart is looking good. I'm just so happy. Okay, and the other thing that happened week 26, like at the very beginning of week 26, I started having a huge increase in Braxton Hicks. And actually the doctor told me they're not considered Braxton Hicks that early. She called it something else, but I can't remember the name that she called it. Uh, but you know what I'm talking about with Braxton Hicks. It's contractions, but they're not painful and they're kind of like practice contractions. And for me, it just means that my belly just suddenly gets super, super tight and like rock hard and it's not painful at all. And I'm not having like any bleeding or anything else associated with it. It's just a rock hard belly. And I kind of have like this weird sensation throughout my body. And it started that day and I had them all throughout the day. I talked to the doctor about it, took it easy, drank tons and tons of water because everyone knows to do those two things, but it did not improve. Ever since that first day of week 26, every single day since then, I've been having contractions all day, every day, on and off, no matter what I do. Like I can just be like sitting there, hanging out, doing nothing and I get a contraction. I think just some people have it a whole lot more than other people. I really wish I was a person that didn't have contractions constantly, but here we are, that's what it is. I don't love it. My belly looks really weird sometimes. I'm not even gonna put the picture in because honestly it looks disturbing to me, but I was having a contraction when I was laying in the bed in the morning and I was on my side and then I rolled over to where my belly was like kind of almost going up and it the shape it was disturbing i'm not gonna lie it's not pretty okay it looks weird especially in combination with my weird belly button and the way it looks now <laughs> uh i also wrote that ice cream makes me feel bad in the evening which is just one of the saddest things ever okay in the last week i have to report on week 27 calf cramps started not full on Charlie horses. And I have heard a lot of people going through this, so I knew it was going on when it started. But since it started week 27, it's been like an almost everyday thing. When I wake up in the morning and kind of stretch my legs out, it like starts the cramping feeling. It doesn't go full on though, which I'm so grateful for because it's just like the worst feeling. But I try not to stretch my legs out, but I think it's just like an unconscious thing. It's annoying. Okay, also I wrote contractions all the time. I already told you that. I feel big suddenly. Uh, rib kicks have started and it's semi uncomfortable and there's just like a lot more movement and the movement is obviously way more pronounced. The baby's a lot bigger. She is two pounds, 13 ounces as of yesterday. And like when she's like rolling around, which I feel like she does constantly, it is a wild, wild feeling. There's a big old baby in here. And then I wrote very shallow belly button saying goodbye. Yeah, I feel like it's only a matter of time. I don't. I don't know what's gonna happen with me and my belly button going forward. It could be anything, but I am saying my goodbyes to the current version of my belly button, which is basically not even here anymore. Okay, I feel like I was talking for a very long time. I hope that wasn't too much. I hope it was helpful for you guys to hear everything that I've been through in the second trimester. It was absolutely a much easier time a much more enjoyable time than the first trimester for me by a million percent. You know, lately I've been feeling like, I like pregnancy, like I, this is good to me, <laughs> where I did not feel like that in the first trimester, even though I know people have it way, way, way harder, but I've definitely enjoyed the second trimester. Let me talk to you about 
products. All right, first off, we have a sports bra. I showed you some more like regular bras in my first trimester video, if you missed that and you wanna see those, but I have been loving this bra. It's from Kindred Bravely, and honestly, <laughs> I have gotten nonstop ads from them on Instagram. And finally I was like browsing on Amazon and I saw that they had their products on Amazon. I was like, fine, I'll try it. And I do not regret it. I feel like this is a really high quality sports bra. It's not a super high impact, crush you down, super firm hold kind of sports bra, which I like. It's more of like an everyday, you could wear this working out, but you absolutely don't have to. You can just wear it to be comfy. Uh, I got it in a medium and it is a nursing sports bra. So it clips down like that. Obviously I don't need the nursing aspect right now, but it's not something that bothers me. And I'm glad that I can use this through the rest of pregnancy and then after birth as well. I think it's cute. I think the material feels really, really high quality and I definitely recommend this. I also have it in black. They have a bunch of colors though. And then in the back, it's kind of like a racer back situation. I like it. I saw a ton of people still asking about stretch marks and if I'm using anything, if I have any yet. And I don't have any stretch marks at this point. Obviously I've got a lot of growing to do in the third trimester. So there's a lot of time left for stretch marks, but so far don't have any really stretch marks. I've already got them. I've already got stretch marks all over the place, all over my hips, my butt, my thighs, my lower back, my knees. I like already have plenty of stretch marks. It will not be like, a life changer if I get stretch marks. But very early on, Grant bought me like a whole gift set of this Palmer's Cocoa Butter Stretch Mark Lotion and Cream. And I got these two and then also this oil. And I've been using this lotion and this oil twice a day. I don't know if it's making a difference. There are a lot of people that say, all of this just comes down to genetics. You're either gonna get them or you're not gonna get them. Lotions and creams and all that kind of stuff don't really do anything, but I just figure I'm gonna be putting lotion on anyway. Might as well just put something on that's like specially for stretch marks. And also more recently in the past couple of weeks, I've gotten this belly band. I think this one is by Belly Bandit. They have it in a few different colors. Why did I get white? And I feel like it works. It's just like a very self-explanatory thing. It's got a bunch of Velcro and it's stretchy. You just stretch it here under your bump and it kind of goes around your back like that. You kind of look like you got a little cumber bun on. You're about to do some heavy lifting. It helps to lift your bump off your pelvis and it's supposed to relieve pain in your lower back and in your pelvis. And I just recently got it because I just felt like it would make me feel more secure. I know my bump is not like, whoa, huge yet. Um, but I just felt like this is something that could come in handy going forward. And so far, I really, really like it. Okay, this is not a product. This is my baby. <laughs> but one of the really, really exciting moments through the second trimester was when we got 3D photos of the baby or a 3D ultrasound. And it was at the high risk OB. Basically, her machine, she can just like zoom it in on the face and she just like flips a switch and it goes into 3D mode. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but we got some really cute photos and it's just like mind blowing. You're like, I'm seeing the face of my baby for the first time. I cannot wait to meet her. And I just got these new 3D photos and I don't know, they're super shiny. It's very hard to show on camera, but I'll just insert some. She has her hand in front of her face. So you can't fully see her face. She's camera shy. She's like, no pictures. It's very cute. I am just so in love with this baby. You guys already know. It's gonna be a lot. <laughs> All right guys, so we're actually still in Hawaii. We've been here for a week. We've got another few days, uh, but I really wanted to get this video out and it ended up being really, really long, like an hour long. So I'm splitting it into two parts. So part two will be up in a few more days and it will have the full q and I answered so many questions, showed my bump, all of that stuff. So keep an eye out for that. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much. You are my people and I love you. We're also vlogging. Did I say we're in Hawaii? <laughs> I'm all over the place. This baby has got my brain scrambled at this point. Anyway, I appreciate you guys and keep an eye out for part two. Thanks. I love you. Bye. Not me.
already out of breath. <sighs> it's all too much. It is all too much. <laughs> Take off my little belly band. Everything's gotten real cute around here lately. <laughs>